question number one please so let's start working from question number one so you have two minutes you can answer this question and you can type your answer here you can just click on a b c okay wonderful so most of you just said answer is a so let me check answer is a or not answer for this question should be a so this one is the right answer wonderful so most of you have got right answer so let me explain you a little bit about this one maybe some students they're still struggling with this one so i will explain quickly and then we go to next one wonderful so most of you have got right answer so the best way to answer this problem is we need to understand the amplitude of wave p is given to us amplitude of p is given so first thing you need to understand amplitude of p is given that is equal to 8 centimeters and frequency of p is also given to us so we need to compare p and q if you look at the amplitude of wave q uh, you can see this amplitude is about half of the given amplitude so it means this one will be about 4 centimeters and because this is given to us this is 8 centimeters now you can also look at the number of waves if you look at wave p you you can see this is the wave e so if we simply draw this one so this is wave e so this is a beautiful way this is how you can draw this is the wave p now now if you look at uh, wave q how many waves we have you can see this is the one wave so this is one wave and here we have this is the second wave so we have two waves here and this is the third wave so it means we have three waves of q and we have three p waves so if you imagine this point let's say you are looking at this point for a certain period of time and you see one wave p is passing through this point one complete wave p and you see three q waves are passing through this point it simply means that the frequency of q so we have frequency of q that one has to be equal to three times of frequency of p so you can simply multiply frequency of p uh, by three so it means this one is the frequency of q so three hertz so this is the best way to answer this problem we are looking at one point for example in this case we are looking at this point we observe one wave p passing through this point and in the same time we see three q waves passing through this point it means frequency of q is three times of frequency of p so the answer for this one is a wonderful so most of you have got this one right let's go to next now let's try to answer this now okay wonderful so just type your answer please this question is not difficult just tricky one we will do few questions maybe two more questions tricky only not difficult then we go to real difficult question so type your answer this is just tricky not difficult at all okay okay so let me explain you the answer now so let's see who is right i think d is winning so d should be the answer d actually in fact is the answer so d is the answer so you see here now the common mistake you have made is that in this case for example some students said b is the answer now you see this one is x so it means this is right wavelength you can find because x axis is uh, distance so you can find lambda that is right but amplitude please you need to understand a is the amplitude so it is given to you amplitude is a so a is amplitude amplitude means th that distance from equilibrium to this point so that is the amplitude so this is not amplitude this is twice of amplitude so it means b is wrong so this part is wrong so b is not answer uh, if you look at c c you see this is the time axis this is time on x axis so it cannot be lambda it was right if this one was time so this one is wrong and this part is right amplitude is right so c is not answer d is the right answer because we have on x-axis this is time and this is time period amplitude is also right so the answer for this question is d so you need to understand from this question you need to read axis carefully okay so this is the point you need to understand uh let's move on to next one i hope this is clear to you uh let's go to next okay answer for this question is b wonderful most of you have got this one right so let me explain you few points about this one because half of the class didn't answer so first thing you need to understand it is given to you constant temperature constant temperature also means that speed is constant if temperature change speed of sound waves change so it is given to you constant temperature so simply from here you can understand v is constant so simply we can write down here uh, v is 
constant. Now we need to understand how we can calculate the speed of waves. Speed of wave v is equal to f times lambda. So if this one is constant, can we simply write down f is equal to v over lambda. So v over lambda. And v is constant. So from here you can simply see that f is inversely proportional to wavelength. So this is the point you need to find. So the answer for this question is b. Okay, inversely proportional. If the speed is constant and if frequency of the speed is higher, it means the wavelength of that wave will be shorter and vice versa is also true. And also you need to understand speed of the wave, it depends on two factors. One is the medium. Same wave in different medium, it has different speed. Means the same wave in different media, its speed is different. For example, speed of sound in air, speed of sound in water is different and also in solid. And also it depends on type of wave. Different types of wave in the same medium, they have different speeds. For example, speed of light in air and speed of sound in air, they have different speeds. So speed depends on these two factors, type of wave. Okay, excellent. So let's go to next. Okay, so let me show you the answer. Answer for this question has to be B. This one is the right answer, please. So let me explain to you why this is the right answer. Okay, so for this one, please, you need to understand, first thing you need to understand, this is time axis. So we have time axis. So it means the distance between two points, uh, two same points, this distance has to be equal to time period. The distance between two consecutive points, that has to be equal to, in this case, mean time between those two consecutive points has to be equal to time period because this is time axis. So time is equal to time period in this case. The second thing we need to understand, what is same for these two? So they have the same displacement. They have same displacement. So the answer for this one has to be D. So B is the right answer. D is not answer because wavelength, this is not exact, this is not the distance. So D is not possible. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Uh, let's move on to next. This is very nice question. Beautiful question about phase difference. So that is the main goal of today's class to teach you about phase difference, how to handle this type of problem. So now we are coming to the main concepts. This type of questions are confusing for many students, not only for you. But I will make sure in today's class, these questions are very clear to you. Let me show you the answer now. So it's been more than two minutes now. Answer for this question is C. I'm not sure how you have got answer A, but let me explain to you now how we answer this type of problems. Uh, the first thing, please, you need to understand whenever you need to find the phase difference between two points or between two waves, so what we need to do is, first of all, in this case, we are talking about between two waves. Uh, we will take the same point on the two waves. So you can take this point, you can see here, and this here. Uh, this point here. Now, what is uh, the phase difference between these two? So in this case, the phase difference means the phi between these two, that is equal to 100 degrees. So the phase difference is equal to 100 degrees. But 100 degrees is not given to you in options. So what you will do, so you will say, let's say this is phase difference one, I can say. And the second one, what you will do, you have to take 360 degrees and you will minus this 100 degrees. So you will get that is equal to two. 260 degrees. So this is the phase difference. So this is one way you can approach. And the second way to answer this problem is to get direct this answer. I can look at this point, this point here on this wave. I can say, let's say this is wave A and let's say this is wave B. And I can look at the same point on wave B. E. So if you look at these two points, you can see the phase difference between this one and this one. That is equal to 260 degrees. And so this is an other way to find this answer directly. But easiest way is to take this point, take this point and see the phase difference between these two. That is equal to 100. But 100 is not given in the option. So we will take 360 minus 100. So that is the next possible phase difference. So that's the reason the answer for this one is C. Okay, so this is how we approach. Pick one point on two waves, the same point, and then you can find the phase difference. Okay, so this is how we can approach. You can take any point on the wave. For example, 
example, if you want to take this point here, this point, for example, on this wave, and on this wave, uh, you can see here this point. This point you can take here on this wave. So this wave here, it is going down. You can take this point and you can find out. This is also actually, in this case, you will see this is 100. So you can take this point on this wave and you can also take this point. So this one you will see is 260. So you can take any same points on two waves and you can find the phase difference. So in this case, answer is C. Let's go to next now. I hope this one is clear to you. Uh, let's move on to next problem. Okay, here is a nice problem. It's very nice one and this will challenge most of you. So I will explain this one in details. Very nice question. Beautiful question. And it will test your understanding of uh, phase difference. After one minute, I will give you the hint. But first of all, I want you to try by yourself so you can check your own understanding. Then I will give you the hint and then I will explain. Okay, just a few seconds, then I will give you the hint. Try by yourself. So let me highlight some points here. It is given to you at this point, at this time period. T is equal to 18 seconds. This is given to us. At which time the phase difference is 1 by 8 of a cycle. 1 by 8 of a cycle. So that time you need to find out. Okay, so uh, in order to answer this question, the best way to answer this problem is you can take the phase difference. So we can take phase difference. So the ratio you need to understand. Answer is B. Mm, okay. Okay. Excellent. So let's see. I will check the answer. So in this case, so you have the phase difference. Phase difference over, uh, you can say in this case, you can say take the wavelength. So this is the wavelength. And here we will take the time divided by time period. Divided by time period means the ratio between these two. Ratio between phase difference, wavelength is the same as ratio between time and time period. Phase difference here. Now, this is the wavelength. When one wavelength is the phase difference is equal to one wavelength, it means this one is equal to time period. Our phase difference, for example, in this case, you can also replace with different. So let me explain to you. Phase difference. First of all, if you look at this one, uh, for this one, what is the phase difference between these two? Phase difference, you can see between this wave, between this point and between this point, you can see that is equal to one by two, one by two. We can simply say one by two, one by two. So we can write down here phase difference over wavelength. This is equal to time over time period. So this phase difference, we can simply also write down in a simple language. We can say the phase difference one over phase difference two. And this is the time T one. And this is the time T two phase difference one. So we are talking about this one. So this is one by eight and phase two at this time that is equal to one by two and t1 we need to find out but t2 is given that is 18 and now from here you can find out value of t1 so that one will be equal to 18 times one by eight so this is one by eight divided by that one will be one by two so simply you can say in this case uh, we have 18 this one will be multiplied by two and this will be divided by eight then you can find the answer so simply we can use this ratio method and we can find the answer so in this case simply if i divide this one by two you will get four here so these two will be cancelled so we can divide this by two we will get two here and here you will get nine again you can divide nine by two so you can cancel with this two so you will get here this is 4.5 so it means t1 is 4.5 seconds so this one is the time period okay so this is the time period now let me extend this formula the ratio method and then you can use for any question for phase difference part difference so i will be writing here so this is the main concept you need to understand part difference for example so we can write down the ratio between part difference over wavelength you can say wavelength this one has to be equal to the phase difference phase difference and you can divide this one by 360 or 2 pi it depends on what you need to find out if you want your phase difference in degrees you can use 360 here if you want the phase difference in radian you can use 2 pi here and this one has to be equal to 
time period. And this one has to be equal to time divided by time period. Divided by time period. And this one you can use for any question about phase difference or part difference. So you can see here now how phase difference and angle they're linked together and part difference wavelength they're linked together. Time and time period they are linked together. And you can extend this one for any question about phase difference and part difference you can use. If you want your answer in radian for example you can use here this will be 2 pi. Then you can get your answer in radian. If you use here uh, 360 your answer will be in phase difference will be in degree. So it depends on the question you need to calculate answer in radian or in degree. So this is how you can answer. I hope this one is clear to you. So most of you got right answer, but most of you didn't answer. So this is how you need to approach this problem and answer for this one is C. Okay, let's move on to next one. We just left a few minutes. So let me go to next question quickly. Okay, very nice question about phase difference and part difference. Answer is B. Okay, let me explain to you. Actually, answer is not B. Answer is not D. Answer is E. Okay, so let me explain to you now. Uh, first thing, please, you need to understand. Answer is E. Wonderful. So the answer is E for this one. So the first thing you need to understand, in this case, it is given to you. I will just explain quickly this one. Uh, first thing you need to understand, it is given to you. This is the epicenter. At this point, waves are produced here. And the time period of the waves is given. So this one is the time period. And in this case, is given to you. A second building is one kilometer away from the epicenter. Means the distance between this point and this point is given. That is equal to one kilometer. So simply, I can draw this arrow here. So this distance is given to you. That is equal to one kilometer. Now, and the phase difference is given to you. So in this case, case simply uh, we can relate this one how uh, we can write down the path difference so we have this is path difference divided by wavelength so we can say this is the lambda this one has to be equal to the phase difference for this one is given this is pi by 2 and this is divided by the phase difference 2 pi so this is part difference we are relating this one with phase difference now from here you can figure out a uh, value of lambda so let me write down here so this one is the phase difference so this is phase difference so i'm just writing here maybe some students they will get confused how we write down pi by 2 so this is pi by 3 this is given to you pi by 3 here. so this value is phase difference is given this is pi by 3 here. So phase difference divided by, uh, we have 2 pi. So lambda, part difference, phase difference will be 2 pi. Now from here, you can find out lambda. So lambda will be equal to pi by 3, and this is 2 pi, and this one is 1 kilometer. This part difference is given, 1 kilometer. So this part difference you can replace. So this is given to you is 1 kilometer. This value is given here. This part difference is given. So we can write down this is one kilometer. Lambda, you need to find out. And so it's simply two pi divided by, you have this is pi by three here. So in this case, you can cancel this. So lambda is equal to six kilometers. So value of lambda we have from here. When you have value of lambda, now you need to find out the speed. So speed of the wave, this is equal to lambda by t, time period. Lambda, in this case, we have this is equal to 6.0 kilometers. And time period is given that is 2.0 2.0 seconds so it means the final answer you will get that is 3.0 kilometers per second so this is how you can find out so this one is the speed so the answer for this one is C. so the main thing you need to understand is that this is the main concept from today's class this is the takeaway part difference over lambda this is equal to phase difference so let me clean this one so this is the concept you need actually rest of the things where different questions you can handle in different way but this is the main concept i have explained to you before but i'm just writing again this one part difference this is the phase difference this is divided by 2 pi uh, you can write down 360s this has to be equal to time over time period so this is how you see time period phase difference and part difference they are linked together so depending on question you can use and you can find answer i hope uh, you have some better understanding about uh, phase difference now and if you have any questions, please, you can speak up right now. Otherwise, our class is over now. And I'll see you in next class.